Hey everyone, welcome back to Opera Home Automation. In today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to install Tasmota onto a D1 Mini. No drivers, no complicated tools, and no extra software. We'll be using the official Tasmota web installer that runs right in your browser. And by the end, your D1 Mini will be ready for Wi Fi, MQTT, and work seamlessly with Home Assistant. get started, you'll need a D1 ESP8266 board. Now, if you're using the Pro version or a Node NCU, you'll need extra drivers installed. I've linked these drivers in the description below. A USB cable. Make sure it's a data cable, not a cheap charging only cable. Trust me, I've spent way too long thinking my board was broken, when really I was just using one of those free cables you get in a box of headphones. And finally, a computer with Chrome or Edge, because the magic happens in your web browser. Okay, everyone, let's get started. Okay, first go to testmotor.github.io forward slash install. I'll leave a link in the description below. So by default, it's test mode to English, but there are a whole lot of different versions for different hardware that you'd use in different scenarios. I generally use test mode to sensors, test mode to light you can use for a Sonic Mini R2, the test mode to 32 Bluetooth option, which is for the Power 320 and related devices, development versions, if you want a sneak peek and to see what they're busy doing, or if you want to test something out, Yeah, we have the unofficial versions. To be honest, I haven't had a close look at these, but they do look interesting. I should think about doing a video on these specifically. But anyway, we'll get to that in another video. So let's go to Tasmota Sensors, which we installed for this video. We go connect. Okay, connect. Plug your device in. Connect. Okay, and then we're going to click install, click erase, any software that might be on there. There's nothing, it's going to do nothing essentially. Click next, click install, simple. I'll also leave a link in the description of Black Adder, the people have uploaded product specific information of how to install test mode. D1 Mini is pretty simple, there's no pairing mode or anything like that, you just plug it in, click install and off we go. Also, leaving this in the foreground does make it go faster. I'm unsure why it goes slower if you do put it in the background, but it will complete. It really depends on your time frame. Okay, so let's go next. We'll select our network. Put the password in. Click connect. Okay, and then we view device. Why is it taking so long? Okay, there we go. In the next section, we'll go through some of the configuration options. Yeah, so let's go through the Tasmata settings. By default, it's pointed to the Sonoff Basic. So let's click on configuration. Let's go to model. Most of these models here yeah, are from older versions of Sonoff. So most of the time we just use generic. You save that. Okay, we go to configuration model. So yeah, we can link the device to the GPI opens on the board. They have made it easy. They can tell you which one, D1, D2, the TX and, TX and RX. 
and the AO. So all your pins are here for the D1 Mini. Okay. So let's use the SRO4 trigger and the SRO4 echo. Okay. So this would be for the SRO4 sonar sensor. Okay, let's go configure Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay, first up, you can see all the different Wi-Fi's on my network. You can select these, put the username and passwords in. You get two options. In case this network goes down, I can set another one for a failover. Hostname, just makes it easier if you're searching for this device on the network or you want to identify it when you are looking on the network, e.g. advanced scanner and so on. All right, you click save here and let's move on. All right, now let's click on configure MQTT. First, let's look at the host name. This is going to put your IP address of your MQTT broker, which is generally your home assistant. The port 1833 is your default port, but you can change this in home assistant and then change it here. Okay, client and topic, I generally make the same. A good description of whatever the unit is doing. Example, pull pump, sonar sensor, whatever you're deciding to use it for. Username and password. If you don't set your MQTT broker username and password, you can use the Home Assistant default username and password. For security reasons, this is not the best practice, and I would recommend setting a separate username and password for your MQTT. And then finally, the full topic. It has a default prefix, and then uses your topic that you've set. You can change this. Maybe you want to use a different prefix to easily determine your test motor devices or the area that it's in. This is completely up to you. I always leave this as default. Okay, let's configure timers. Yeah, we can enable timers. You get 16 different timers that you can set on one device. The output one, which you only have one, and then you can set toggle on, off, or rule. You can set enable or repeat. You can set a timed or you can set the sunrise and sunset, which it picks up automatically. And then finally, you can set which days of the week they run. This is very nice if you don't want to rely on the internet or home assistant being up and running for something to kick off. Next, let's move on to logging. Okay, in logging, you can have a syslog host. If you have one of these, I've never used this before, you can set system logging levels to troubleshoot or to get information that you might require. <clears throat> the only one I use is a telemetry period. This will force a send to the MQTT broker at a certain period. I normally set this to about 60 seconds, so every minute. There are times where I'm required to send it a lot more often, but there's also times where I only need to send an update every couple of hours. Okay, let's go configure other template we'll get back to. This I'll need to show you from the Black Adder web page where we can get the setting and how it works. We can activate it over here. Web app and password, we can enable here. If you want to protect your test motor device, HTTP API, I'm also going to go through the scenario with that. Enable MQTT, that we've already done. Device name and friendly name, I normally set this to the same as whatever the MQTT topic name is. And the last part, I've never used anything here other than none. Okay, first off, this is a great resource. If you want to find any product that you think might be able to be flashed with Tasmata, come check here first. The site is templates.blackadderwithrc.com. All right, let's have a look. We're going to have a look for the Power 320. Power 320, son of device. This device doesn't have any instructions on how to flash it. It is pretty simple, um, as you just hold down the button to put it into pairing mode. On some devices, you have to find the GPR zero to get it into pairing mode. Most of these products will have those instructions on the page. Yeah, is what we want. This piece of code, yeah. This is what we put under templates under other that I showed you earlier, and we're going to do now. now. So we copied that. Okay, we go back into Tasmata and we go configure module. 
Now you see that the Power R320D is available in the list. So we select that and we click Save. Let's do the rest now. Configure templates. This is what happens after the step before was done. It sets all of these. You can go here and tinker if you wanted to. To be honest, I haven't used this much, but when I have, it has been useful. Okay, reset configuration, back to factory default. You can back up your configuration or restore your configuration. Okay, let's go to the main menu. Firmware updates, if you want to update your firmware, just be careful here. Um, if you have Tasmoto sensors or Tasmoto light or something like that installed, the default it's going to have here is the Tasmoto bin GP, which is going to remove all your sensors. It's not the biggest train smash because you can just go back in and put the correct command in here. I'll, I'll also link in the description below where to find the links. And or you can go to that site, download the files and just upload them here. Or if you had some custom code, and you want to change from Tasmoto altogether, you can actually go upload it here as well. And then let's go to console. Over here, we can see exactly what's going on, what the device is doing, what it's talking to, what energy readings it's getting. Um, if there's a problem connecting to an MQTT broker or something like that, you can see everything here. Also, you can run commands here. So this is command I created to set a static IP address. The reason for this was I had three power threes and it was connected to a pump, a three-phase pump. So basically what we had to do was create static IP addresses across all three devices. And then we also created a rule. If it exceeded, if any one of these devices exceeded a specific amperage to turn off, but it had to turn the other two off as well. So part of that rule was if it turns it off, it would go turn the other two off using the web API. Very powerful tool, awesome. I'll also leave a link in the description below for Tasmota commands. You can do so much directly from Tasmota without the need for something like Home Assistant. If you have any ideas or need any help with this, please drop a comment and I'll see what I can do for you. And that's it. You've just flashed Tasmota onto D1 Mini using only your web browser. No extra tools, no drivers, just one simple click for install. And we also had a look at all the Tasmota features and some useful tools like Blackadder, MQTT, and Web API. Now you're ready to build your smart home projects from tank level sensors to relays and beyond. If this video has helped you, hit like and subscribe for more home automation guides. And let me know in the comments what will be your first project with Tasmota using a D1 Mini.